scale of the disaster came into focus. Police, fire... Ronnie, you're very welcome. Thanks a million for coming to talk to us today. Now, it is, as we said, nearly 20 years on, but even for somebody who wasn't there at the time, it's upsetting to watch. I can't imagine what it must be like for you. They were there to watch you play that yeah. day. Yeah, that's probably the second or third time I've seen that. Um, once was the really? night of the game. Really? And it's just one of those things that you don't really want to see. Um, we weren't really aware of what was going on or how bad it was because at six minutes into the game, the referee come to me as captain and said, get the players off the pitch because one lad had run on the pitch. I don't know how the referee knew there was something going on. Um, mm. But we were taken off the pitch and put into the dressing room then. And we didn't... We weren't told an awful lot. And mm. We'd been through it before, five years earlier, a heisel, yeah. when we were put in the dressing room as well and not told what was going on. But you realise when it takes that long, there's something serious. Did you have a feeling, though, when you were in the dressing room that something well, was up? One stage the door was open and a lad run past the dressing room door, uh, crying and shouting, you can't play the game, there's people dying out there. And that gives you a bit of a shock. You know, you're thinking, God, what, what is going on? We're going on through this again. Mm. Um, and then Kenny had been able to speak to the, the people to That's try and right. calm things down and um, we were getting feedback of one or were two. Were you under the impression that it was violence rather than yes, people being crushed? That, yeah, that was more what we were thinking of, just fighting behind the goal. The fans have got together somehow and got in that end and they're fighting each other. But no, we didn't know it was just a big crush. How long were you actually playing for before you were actually told, ushered into the I think it was six rooms? minutes. That's all. I think it was five or six minutes. And before, before then you were taken away, did you have any feeling that there was something going on in, in the stand, that there was something strange happening? No, not at all. The whole day had been a normal day of playing a football match. You know, so you can't really remember an awful lot before that six minutes. Mm -hmm. um, because you're just doing your normal thing, you're getting changed in the dressing room, you're going out doing your warm-up. Even in the warm-up we didn't realise anything was happening. And it was only referee went, you've got to get off. There was, no, there was nothing there to tell us there was something going on behind the goal. You're just doing your job, basically. Yeah, you, you, you are thinking about what, what you're going to do when, once the game starts. Mm. So we weren't looking at that end of the pitch, really. Now, we know now what happened, that people were funneled, it, too many people yeah. were funneled into a space that was too small to keep them. But it's hard to imagine now that people were literally kept in pens or cages mm. at football matches at the time. It's hard to imagine that now, Ronnie, isn't it? It is very, very difficult to imagine that that can happen. Yeah. Um, and when the, when the gate was open, they, they, they probably should have delayed the game by 15 or 20 minutes. And then they could have got people around to, to usher them to the sides where it was more or less empty, the two sides of where the, the crush had come in the middle one. There were uh, roadworks that delayed the Liverpool supporters yeah. as, as they went to, 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 um, to the pitch, wasn't that right? Yeah, they, was, they were then stuck outside this big gate and the police have said that they thought the gate was going to go in. So they decided to open it. And then actually they just all funneled into the nearest part. Peter Beardsley also hit the crossbar. Mm -hmm. And a big cheer went up from the crowd. Now, whether that forced people at the back to try and get in to see what had happened, yeah. again, I, I, I don't know. But, yeah, it is. It's, it's funny to think back now, the way you look at grounds around the country now, um, how different they were to people being herded into little pens behind the goal. Mm -hmm. Your own family and friends were actually there at the stadium on the day yeah. watching the match. Where were they? Um, they would have been all right because we knew they were in the stand. They weren't standing behind the goal, so that wasn't a major problem for me. Yeah. But you know the likes of Steve McMahon, a scouser, John Aldridge, a scouser. I think they had friends and family that would have been in that end, and it was a lot more worrying for them, and they were rushing around trying to phone people to make sure people were home as we were getting back towards the ground. Now, once you got, got up to reunite with the family, they, of course, had a vantage point that you didn't have in the dressing room of what was happening. What was the effect on them, Ronnie? When we got into the players' lounge, it was wives and girlfriends that really only looked to be in there, and they were still showing some little pictures of what had gone on. It, the, the, there wasn't the crowd that we've just seen on the TV then, mm -hmm. most of the crowd had gone, but there was still the, the advertising boards on the ground where people had been laid out and carried out. Um, and the wives were all crying and the girlfriends, they were, they were just roaring and crying. And you, As you say, they'd seen it, we hadn't seen what had gone on. And as I said, I don't really want to see it, it's not nice to look at. Yeah, and uh, you know, I suppose uh, you know, we have to show it to market, but for you who were there on the day, it, it must be very upsetting. And, and we apologise yeah. no, for no, that. No, no, it was, it, was, it, was, uh, it, it is upsetting when you see it because mm. And sometimes you feel a little bit guilty about it because these people come to watch you play football. Um, and, and I think it was the start of the next week, we went to the hospital where all the, those fathers and kids, kids and all that still on respirators. And, and that was very hard. And then once I got back to the, to the house after that, there was a lad had died called Ian Ronnie Whelan. His mm. nickname was Ronnie. Mm. And that was hard to take. That was, that was the worst night for me. You had to go to his funeral as well, didn't uh, yeah, you? Went we to went a lot to of funerals. Yeah, well, we, we tried to get to every funeral, at least one or two of the lads be at every funeral. And we, we did 
cover it with, with one player or another was at every funeral. When you meet the family of people who went on a on a day out to enjoy themselves mm. as a as a family, how do you, how do you communicate with people? Well, we we were asked to go and, and meet the families of the of the people who died at the ground, um, not long after the the, 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 the disaster. Sorry, um, and as you're going in, you, you you're so you're just wondering how, what's the reaction going to be mm. because their wife, their son, their daughter, they, they went to see us playing a football game and never come home and it was a little bit scary at the start. You didn't know what to say or how to say it. Whether they blame um, you in a way? Yeah, well, that's, that's what goes through your mind. Mm. I don't know if it went through everybody's mind mm. but that was going through my mind. That, mm. You know, they went to watch us and, you know, they haven't come home. Um, it was okay in the end. Yeah, they, they were, they were, I think they were, they were happy that we did go and see them and we did go and speak to them all. And, and they could tell you stories about their son or, or father and yes. how they loved Liverpool mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have, they would have rather been there than somewhere else. So, yeah, it was, it was okay in the end. Well, like next Wednesday is the 20th anniversary of the disaster. How is it being marked? Um, there's, a, there's a big commemorative day on, at Anfield um, mm. that all the players will be invited to. Unfortunately, I'm away and I can't, I can't really go, which is which is not really good, but um, it's going to be, it's, it's a sad day in the city. I think every anniversary of, of, of Hillsborough is a sad day mm, in the city. Sure. But they're, they're a bit like the Irish. You've been there, you know what the Scousers are like. They, they gather around in, in times of need. And they're they're really a bit like, like Irish that. people in a way. Yeah, they they're do, very they're much like, like If something that. happens, they will gather around mm. each other and help each other. And they were great. Even the Everton supporters, and whether it was football or not, all people of, of Liverpool gathered around and helped everybody around that time. Ronnie, thank you so much for coming in to talk no to us today. Talking about a subject that is, it is difficult. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, thank you. Now we're not going to be here tomorrow because of the.